Well, we are here right now at TCAF in the Comics vs. Games area with Connor McCreary, one of the creators behind Kill Shakespeare. We're at the Kill Shakespeare booth. And it's very interesting you're in the Comics vs. Games area because you have both comics and a game called Kill Shakespeare. That is factually accurate. Yes. It's like you do your research or something. I have an internet. Oh, I see. I've heard about those. Yeah, Are they yeah. good? Yeah, they're good. Okay, they're good. I should get one of those, huh? Yeah. Is it like a schnauzer? Are they like about the same size? Because it's a dog, right? It's, uh, well, it can. It's like a seeing eye dog for the interwebs. Because I hear you just like fetch things, right? Everybody's like, oh yeah, I can, I can get that on the internet. You know, I get that with the internet. So I figured it must be some sort of like retriever dog. It is. Well, like a, I, like a, like a you know what? We could spend hours. D discussing this, but I don't know That's if we have time for this. the interview afterwards. Right, I enough. promise. Once fair we're enough. done, once we're off camera, I will introduce you to the internet. Yes. So, with the safe search off. Uh, Kill Shakespeare started off as a bunch of graphic novels. Right. And we wrote three graphic novels, and you know we had a great time doing it. And IDW, our publisher, was you know super happy to do it. And Andy Belanger, our artist, was like rocking it. And IDW came up to us and they said, "Hey, you know we want to do this game division." And we really love your world. And we have these two game designers, these like really smart kids out of Belgium, who want to do a fantasy adventure style game. Can we use the Kill Shakespeare world? And so we got a copy of this game sent to us, and it's amazing. It's this game called Yato. And we said, yeah, please. So that's kind of how this whole weird world came, where we went from being a comic book to also having a board game. So have the fans of the comic come over to the game, or has the game now found new fans in the comic? Yeah, I think a bit of both. I mean, we included it when you buy the game, you get the first trade okay. as part of the game, or at least an issue, depending on like whether you're buying the super fancy version or not. So yeah, we have a lot of people who are gamers. It's interesting how like, the board game and the comics world, you'd think they would just, oh, they'd be totally crossing over. But there's actually a lot of new people who come to us, yeah, because they've played this board game. And we have a lot of our comics fans who have never really played a really intense, in-depth board game. Like maybe Settlers, that might be like that one toe they've dipped right, into right, like right, right. serious board gaming. And so yeah, our board game is like that first one, we're getting an email like, wow, it took us like three hours to figure out how to play, but this is crazy, like, so it's kind of cool. It's, it's it's neat to introduce people to something new. Of course, totally, and that's that's what life is all, you know what, that's what the internet's all about too. Uh, <laughs> I can't wait to see this. Yeah, thing. you're gonna you're gonna love it, man. You're gonna love it. I swear, it's gonna be great. Um, but uh, you know, of course, Kill Shakespeare. You know, that's that's the big book that brought you to the dance. A lot of people know you for Kill Shakespeare. But of course, this past year there was also a book released through Dynamite, a miniseries, yes. uh, Sherlock Holmes versus Harry Houdini. Has anyone ever done that pairing before? Yes, actually. Okay. Yes, you know what? There has been one, but not a, we. When we were doing our research, we found a cartoonist. I think out of Japan, okay. who'd done an English language Houdini Holmes crossover. Right. But beyond that, like, I don't think so. I mean, it's interesting, right? Because yeah. uh, Sherlock Holmes, you know, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, who wrote Sherlock Holmes, was actually very good friends with Harry Houdini in real life. Oh, okay. And then they had a crazy falling out because uh, Doyle believed in spiritualism. Right. So despite the fact that he writes Holmes, the big rationalist, he was totally convinced that there were ghosts and things controlling our lives. And Houdini spent the last part of his life trying to debunk that whole notion. Mm -hmm. And so they, they basically lost their friendship because Holmes just didn't believe that Houdini wasn't using special magic powers. Like he really believed that Houdini was using magic powers oh. to do what he did. And they, yeah, they had a falling over when Houdini was like, look, I don't. Holmes was like, fine, you know what? If you don't want to tell me you're, you know, basically you're one of your best friends on earth, well, I'm done with you. And they never made up. Oh my God, that's yeah. crazy. So that's a great logic on point to have Holmes and Houdini team up. It's kind of almost like repairing that relationship between the two in a way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's it's a comics version of a big warm hug between you know two men who they just darn it they just shouldn't have been able to quit each other. Yeah, exactly. The one thing that's interesting about the comic because there is even within the base of the comic supernatural versus illusion. You know, like a lot of that in the story. Um, having as uh, as the villain. Whoa! Spoiler alert! Spoiler! All right, you're gonna like bleep out what he just said there. <laughs> yes, we have used another famous character another, from history yes. who also sort of straddles the line between like, was he magic or was he real? Like, where did the myth begin? Like, is it possible this unnamed character who is the villain in our comic? Right. Sorry. Hey, hey, hey! Don't worry, don't worry. I will bleep it out. 
But anyways, that Bleep particular villain, uh, that particular villain, um, as of course, as the legend goes, you know, he, there was a it was there unkillable. Was, it was that unkillable, was yes. And I was thinking, because apparently, like that, some people said they tried like 99 times to go. I'm thinking the secret to res to that villain has to be that he had the Konami code. <laughs> up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA, select, start. That has to be the answer. It's pretty true, actually. And if you actually look very closely at how some how that villain moves in our comic, his first movements are yeah, up, down, up, down, left, right, left, right. Yeah, that's yeah. that's actually how he moves in the comic. There that was go. our little hint that they, that's wow. Yeah. That's it's that's like true. it's it's meta. It's in depth right there. How do you get that wonderful beard? You know what, the way you start is by having Andy Belanger as your artist and watching his like amazing, luxurious like man coat grow off his right. chin and you just think, I need that. So it's a little bit of a little bit of beer oil, a lot of groom. I actually grew my beard for the first time in my life, but this has taken a long time to grow out. I feel I could grow this for another five years and it would probably look the same. So <laughs> But I feel like as a redheaded guy you gotta go that way, right? Hey. Like this is my Viking beard. Exactly. Every redhead has to go Viking once. There you well, I got to say, the one thing I'm definitely looking forward to upcoming on the internet is all the Connor McCreary beard memes. <laughs> <laughs>